Hello all, we are live. <clears throat> Just waiting for Maestro Ducano to come on up. Um, this will be episode 33 featuring Maestro Ducano. So a lot of good things coming up. His historical perspective along with his journey. Uh, we're gonna cover the bladed hand and all that good stuff. So he was sent the invite. Just seeing when he's going to come on up. Set the screen here. All Hey, Audi. Thanks for jumping in. How are you? We're just waiting for Maestro to come on. He's got the invite. We were just chatting, actually, on the platform. Um, his voice was coming perfectly, but there was an issue with his picture coming through. I just sent him a message. I'm just waiting to hear back from him. Hopefully, uh, oh, I think this is him. All right. All right. Yeah. Three, two, one, and <laughs> Hello, <All right>. finally. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the tech gods will remain with us that will be good <laughs> Tell I, don't, you. We, I, I don't i don't have any spare goats to sacrifice for that yet right so <laughs> oh, are you sure you, wait come on now you can't you can't dig up one <laughs> well <laughs> let's just see maybe my neighbors won't notice <laughs> put your mask on going out there and you know. <laughs> nobody would notice <laughs> all right wow. so so Thanks what was it for... yesterday? We were uh, we were at it for an hour right. and a half, and mm -hmm. uh, stuck with it. We got it to go right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh. Well, okay. So interesting. Yeah. So, so you we were um, from the chats. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Audie. Yeah, Audie says uh, we got somebody who says we can see us and hear us. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, hello, I want to hi, Audie. <laughs> Yeah, right. I want to officially welcome uh, welcome you to FMA discussion. Right. This is episode thirty three, featuring Mike wow. Trojano, and uh, I'm excited. So, how are you? Well, fine. Uh, given the quarantine situation, we're doing okay here. I'm yeah, broadcasting from our kitchen. You can see from the back. <laughs> yeah, hey, whatever, yeah. whatever works. Yeah. Right. Yep. So. So what's the uh, what's the situation over there? Do, like, do you guys have a time frame for as like when it's going to end for you? Or well, let's see. Uh, given at the moment, there the the terminology can be interesting. Uh, our government has shifted to what we call the general community quarantine. Uh, there's a limited um, opening of public transportation. Uh, it's coming. Uh, people are required to wear masks, but basically businesses are being encouraged to reopen, although they're trying to graduate it, you know, bit by bit so that nobody, the virus doesn't spread quickly. Um, there's, they're ramping up efforts to do contact tracing, though we hope that that could be done faster and better. You know, that's, yeah. that's the way it always is. Um, we're adjusting now to life online, you know. Uh, over here, we've always been a very face-to-face -face culture, right? Yeah. So life online is adding a new dimension. It's changing the way we see and do things by now. So, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I think this is going to change the landscape permanently in some, in some ways. Oh, yeah. 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 
Okay, excuse me a bit. I got that itch because sometimes my throat dries up. Uh, <coughs> um, the our university is now going to be shifting to online teaching, mm -hmm. given the uneven quality of internet uh, that all fa even faculty have access to students and faculty. Um, we might be going to asynchronous, you know, um, put up something online, students respond, teacher checks the evaluation, and maybe face-to-face, -face, uh, well, online classes would be, online lectures be something like staggered out, spread out through the semester instead of meeting twice a week, like that was the old norm. Okay. Those are the realities we face up to now that we're going online, we now realize these are the kinds of things that we, the challenges that we're facing now. Yeah. Yeah. Over here, like um, yeah. each state over here is kind of doing things mm -hmm. differently pending the governor. And we're slated yeah. for June 20th for oh. you know, some openings. I know. Um, but it's a star, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, what a mess. Though. All our economies are already teetering. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah we're you at, know, that affects even the way we do martial arts now. <laughs> everything. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I know. This is going to change the landscape. In a I've lot been. Of, this is this is one time. Yeah. Um, this is one time when I've seen my friends and myself that push, pushing more content online. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, and I think after it's all done, I think yeah. that's going to be. I think that's going to be oh, one of the ways. Too. Could be done, you know. That's for sure. Um, um, what I wanted, to, you know, I'm going to jump right in because you you're coming really popular. Yeah. Like people yeah. were just dying to hear from you and um, and all that. Really? So, yeah. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> 100, 100%. Really. I want. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, uh, that's interesting I'm, to know. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, Terry Joven says hi, Professor. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, say hi, Terry. Long time no see. When yeah. was the last time we saw each other? It's more than ten years ago. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Wow. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Hey, hey um, Paul. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so, what I want to um, I got a bunch of things here. Um, so, um, what I kind of wanted to start was before we get to historical stuff and the bladed hand and all that yeah. Yeah. and your own thing what i want to know is um just overall for the viewers who might not know what yes you know, what is, um your background in fma like what oh. was your first experience what system yeah. all right mm -hmm. all right um i've my background originally was with the lightning scientific army system um, I had three teachers in that art. The first one, I've not meant, well, this is also my shortcoming. Huh? I haven't mentioned him as much because I had spent only about a year or so, a year and a half training with him. His name was Carlos Canilao, Mang Carl as we called him. He taught FMA and Judo in a district in Cubao. This a uh, part of Quezon City, and th that was uh, it was an interesting time. The first time I wielded a stick, the first time I learned what angles are, you know, the sort of thing. Um, during that year and a half, I was with him. That's if I remember right, and this was way back in 1986, if I remember right. Okay. Uh, that's when I met the Grand Master of the Art, uh, Mang Ben Lema. And then um, that was also my first time to participate in a tournament. Back then, the Arnis Philippines was still forming, and it was the second tournament that they had in a mall in Quezon City. And it was the first time I had experienced sparring in FMA. So that was a very memorable time with Mang Carl. Uh, because of changes at the time I was in law school i had drifted out of touch with him and um, i kind of missed the guy I'm just, I'm just so glad i reconnected with some of the other students from the old days then i was introduced through a mutual friend to 
the teacher who had, to one of the teachers who had influenced me the most, and that is the late uh, Maestro Elmer Ibanez. Although when he was alive, he, we would call him Guru, and that was the only title he would accept from us. And Guru Elmer shaped us. Guru was then, I think, uh, modifying what he had learned from Grandmaster Ben Lema, and he was creating his own system at the time. And then he called it, eventually before he left, he had formulated it and called it the Lemma Scientifically Arni System. And <clears throat> that was what basically, it's something like the original system, but with some of the modifications he thought were important. And some of the things he felt were, should be given more emphasis. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And then... <clears throat> After he had left, we went on to train with the Grandmaster himself. Okay, so these are my three teachers in the art. And okay. with Grandmaster Ben, he gave us another way of looking at the art. And so those of us who trained under both teachers tasted the spectrum huh? in terms of teaching methodology, in terms of interpretation of content, in terms of, what well, you'd say, old and new. And I still hold those lessons in my heart very much. Now, for my other FMA, that would be about early 2000s, I met, I was introduced to Mang Tony Jago. And I was very Maestro? thankful for those lessons. Maestro, can I just stop? It's okay if I just back you up? Huh? Uh, there are some cultural differences here so for the viewers to understand um uh, excuse me yes. maestro yes yes i, I it's, it's okay if i just back you up no reason why i'm asking sorry is, I, I lost you a bit yeah what yeah i just want to see if i could just back you up a bit um and the only reason why i'm asking is this is the first time i've heard anybody talking about lightning the scientific arnis Yes. And I wanted to know if you could just give us the viewers just like um, I know um, oh. Master Ben was, uh, was left handed. Like what it's all about, sort of thing? Yeah. Is, would that be okay? <clears throat> uh, so, what the system is like, what it's all about, what it emphasizes, that sort of thing? Yeah. Would that be okay? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, sure. Why not? All right. Um, well, when I learned lightning arnis, of course, we started with the stick, right? Um, we learned naturally, like with most others, angles of striking. Uh, he called it the 13 strikes. Mang Ben used an older form of English that he was used to because he was born in the early 1900s and they called it 13 manners of striking you know there, um, some of these old ways of speaking english that's indicative of the generation of filipinos who grew up learning english to remember that that was the american colonial period um lightning emphasizes power and speed all right but this one uh when we first learned it we were taught how to crash through your opponent okay um there were 13 strikes we had to learn the strikes had the two interpretations one of them was of course an angle of movement and the other one was a target so that depended on what you were focusing on did you focus on a target or are you focusing on an angle of movement most of the time we focus on the angle of movement okay so that means and what everybody over there on your part of the world calls a forehand strike. This is okay. number one, and it's very common to everyone. A number one can go to the temple, okay? But a number one can also go to the hand. A number one can also go to the elbow. That depends on where you are, whatever place you are in. And in sparring, that's a very important distinction, okay? So you're not really too worried about this, but can your strike, whatever strike you're using, hit the other guy and can you decide switch your targets in the heat of the fight and you know, that requires a very different level of thinking yeah, because oh the original targets out of range but I, I want to get him here right here 
Okay. okay. Um, Lightning Arnis has these 13 striking uh, techniques. Uh, most of the others are, you know, the majority of the 12 are those symmetrical patterns, except that there is a strike that's targeted on the neck. So that's why you have 13. And there are 12 methods, which are short combinations of the 13 movements, but they teach you different tactics. They emphasize uh, a very three-dimensional way of movement. Most of the time, they're taught from a fixed position, okay? They're static. But after a while, when you go to the two-person interactive drills in which you have only two major ones that we have, then you learn to adjust them. You have the stepping, you go forward, you go backward, you go to the side, and so on. The interactive drill that we have is called Bigay Tama, uh, really giving and striking. So it's a, it's a, you know, most people see it as a block and counter drill, which is for okay. beginners, that's fine. But when you're been around for a while, you're attacking his attack and uh, taking a target that opens up, which basically is the head most of the time. Right? The other one we call Cadenilia or Spada Idaga because of the movement you know, that goes front and back. Okay, And this one teaches a different form of interaction. So the two kinds of interactive drills balance each other. Then when you go to free sparring from that, the Cadenilia has already taught you how to do multiple striking. The 12 methods gives you a repertoire of tactics to choose from. The Bigay Tama has already taught you how to angle out of in and out of, go to the side, outflank the opponent, and you have to put them together in a free sparring environment. And you have to test everything and make sure that you can pull off each and every one of what you learned under pressure. Excellent. That's why the, the GM was very fond of sparring and he loved it whenever there was a tournament and you know um, some of my friends who've been through through this they were very informally learning lightning from the old man <clears throat> would tell me he would visit whenever he knew there was a this this friend of mine was playing he would just sit on the sidelines and tell him this is what you do 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 and then say see it works that sort of thing so um everything has to come together in free form action right of sure. course there's the empty hand parts of the art these are like kind of like emergency techniques so if this is what you do against a club assault and it's very very clear that these were basically things that you needed to learn just in case you got caught without a weapon that was very clear to us because um I see a lot of discussion nowadays about the nature of FMA empty hand art. Um, a lot of it is fine, but you know, um, you'd know, you have to do a lot of work just to make a, uh, pull it off against somebody who's been specializing in empty hand arts. You know, the saying, yeah. you want to punch, punch. So you want to kick, kick. Maestro, is yeah. that because it's so But intricate? then again, not necessarily the, the stuff okay. that we learned uh, you know the gm was quite open about the fact that he had learned other arts especially the japanese arts like aikido and judo and he incorporated what he liked and thought were blend into the art with them so uh, many of our empty hand counters have a flavor that's reminiscent of aikido and judo Oh, right? okay, okay. It's it's not so much the intricacy, I think, you know, because what I see in the interactive drills, the intricacy is meant to teach a student sensitivity. You know, if he if you were countered, what would you do? You know, so that builds a kind of skill, sensitivity that can be useful. But in the end, you'd have to be able to pull up something in just like this. Yeah, right. Quickly. At the moment, and in an emergency, the emergency part of the art needs to be practiced equally as much as the weapon part of the art because um, you know you're dealing with a life or death situation <laughs> and yeah, so that's no, why sometimes I mean, yeah. sometimes that's why perhaps in the as one of my friends from another system put it how much time do we actually spend doing that part compared to the main core of the art which is a weapon 
Of course, we can discuss that then later on, but it, it's an issue that comes up. So we have an empty hand portion, which is very explicit. These are emergency techniques. That's for the stick and that's for the knife. Many of us were exploring, so what? how does that work against a punch? And we come up with some sort of interesting uh, things, right? But the best part would be, well, if you're friends with a boxer, uh, spar with your friends. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah, right. you gain, you know, gain they, that experience. Least, the, the truth is out there, you know? Yeah, yeah because as, Tyce, as Iron Mike Tyson once said, everybody has a plan until the <laughs> punch hits their nose. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 that's one of my favorite quotes because that's, hard that's to true. Argue. <laughs> when you spar in FMA, yeah, when you spar in FMA, the first time the stick hits your mask, uh, where's your plan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need that. lots of sparring time. And I, I, I'll say I, I need more time in that area, uh, you know, just to make sure that your plan works. <laughs> yeah, I know. God forbid. There you go. You then there's, out. of course, the, then, then there's, of course, what we call the stick disarming, uh, weapon to weapon disarms. Mm -hmm. And th these are relatively simple ones. Yeah. These have to be kept simple. And sometimes, <clears throat> given the nature of what we do, um, we found out to our own, you know, our fingers remember when you yeah. do this a bit of full force, you go, <laughs> oh my God. and the potential for damage to the joints was right there. So he said, okay, <clears throat> but those are interesting stuff that we had to learn too. And they, they, you know, most of these things keep coming at near uh the time after you've learned after you've done time with your interactive uh, stick work and sparring mainly because the sparring and the other stuff that you do builds a base to be able to do this a transition it's okay uh something you've noticed why are this stuff always towards the end and maybe that's because you need to be skilled with the stick to build up a base that can then you know transition over to doing this other stuff it's an area I'm also still trying to explore myself and see, oh, did I get that right? Yeah, that's oh, what I'm okay. So let's see. What else do we have? There's, of course, there are some things that were countering measures, countering techniques. Of course, that's got part of it, as well as defenses for knife. Uh, emergent, again, I'll emphasize this, emergency, emergency. techniques for the knife. Yeah, because... The, everybody needs to be familiar and to work against nightmare scenarios. Like for instance, you know, the, the most famous one is the sewing machine. No, I mean, I <laughs> so you, you have yeah, major, this part of my major repertoire is empty hand against knife yeah. because, man, if yes. you don't understand the offense. Right. <laughs> so, you, you you know, the one of the things we learned, I think, and I'm just, you know, piecing it together now, is that doing the other stuff beforehand, the sparring, the stick work, etc., uh, not only builds a certain pat reflex pattern that you can find useful for emergency techniques against the knife, but that um, mindset, you know, that that shiny pointy object is coming at you you have to take the initiative <clears throat> yeah seize it first before he sees it's you otherwise oh, yeah. the it's moment just, he grabs yeah. your neck and does the sewing machine uh your percentages go down and yeah thankfully, no, you're behind. yeah 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 now you're in big trouble <laughs> yeah it's, um... better to practice and sweat it out there and at least not have not have to pay such stuff. Yeah, so that's... those are the things we learned from Lightning. Then, of course, we, uh, well, let me see. We were touching on other things like how does this work with a bladed tool like a sword or the working knife, etc. And in many ways, many of the older generation of, my, of Grandmaster Ben students still you know knew some knew a lot of this stuff and it's still around right so it's there so in a nutshell that's where that's uh, nice 
left the screen. I remember and recall from Lightning. I hope that I helps. Hear you. <laughs> I, Maestro, I can hear you, but unfortunately, you left the um, screen. Anyway, uh, I think he, we're, we're slowing down a bit. <laughs> can you hear me? No, I can hear you perfectly, but you left the platform. As part of my other martial arts journey, um, I mentioned earlier about a bit about lightning and some of the cultural nuances involved in the different FMAs I learned. You know? um, from yes, yeah, no, I'm. Just, oh no, um, oh no, am I back on again? Not, no, I'm hearing. Am I back on again? But you left these. You left oh, the platform. <laughs> but hearing you fine. So I'm not sure um, which one. You, I'm thinking perhaps maybe hit the invite or yes. the, maybe try that. But again, hearing you. All fine. right, we'll do it again. All right, all right, all right. So I'll shut this off and click the link um, again. No, I'm wondering if you could just while you're there, just hit it again. I'm. I don't know if you necessarily need to leave. All right. I'll. I just hit it again. I'm not sure why. Here we go. Here we go. People are watching. Right. Can you still hear my intro? Terry, can you? Yeah, still I can hear you? you. I just lost the. I just oh, lost your audio back. for a you're while. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> no that's great. Hearing. I was definitely hearing you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, we're back. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Okay. I just want to take Maestro. Some people made some comments I just wanted to share with you. Is that okay? Awesome. Oh, boy. We we're going so well there. Uh... Hold on, folks. I'm going to have to X him out. And bring him back. Oh, brother. Uh, all right, hang with us. I'm going to uh, remove him, but bring him back. Um, Oh, brother. Just send him a message. Doing so well there. <sighs> Jeff, you, okay. Huh. All right, HP back on. Um, yes. All right. Show and screen. Okay. Three, I two, <laughs> one, blast off. <laughs> All right, we're back. All right. Hey, we got back. So. All right, okay. third world internet. <laughs> <laughs> but Maestro, I wanted yep. to just, some people made some comments. I wanted to share sure. them with you. Okay. Go ahead, okay. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always like to do that when people are kind enough to comment. Um, so Jeff T. Cruz, love your shirt. Um, <laughs> professor. Yeah. Mark That's Stewart true. with the famous WADA. Mike <laughs> Frazier, hi guys. Yeah, yep. that's a neat shirt. <laughs> Vico, uh, Guru Vico, please send my warmest oh. regards to Professor. Please Hi, ask Vico. him to come, come visit us as soon as he can. Sure. Uh, and and um, the Professor had a great time in the FMA Festival, mm. Devo? Um, yes, uh, okay. that was about a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay, well, you said, uh, some... <clears throat> said you had a great time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
Yes, Jeff. Tech issues definitely happen. Um, Lou. <laughs> hi, sir. Yeah. Yo. And, hi, Lou. <laughs> all right. Okay. So where we we were at, and thank you very much for sharing the yes. light scientific stuff. Like, um, I, you know, I always I always knew about the system, but didn't really un didn't know much just far as a name and and mount. Yes. Brand. Okay. So, but thank you for right. going into that. That was um, that was wonderful. Um, thank you. What were you, so you were about to transition to, if I'm not mistaken, your next experience, um, Mong Tony, KI? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, in the early 2000s, um, I was then training with um, Master Alex Ko in Gocho Kung Fu, right? Everybody was with that, yeah. <laughs> yes, and then. Uh, while practicing the office, Mang Tony would drop by once in a while to visit. And then my training partner and I were talking about the training in uh, Mang Tony's system. And then he said, well, okay, um, I'll work it out with him. And then he asked Mang Tony if uh, I could join. And then he just looked and he said, sure, right then and there. He picked up a stick and said, come on, let's go. <laughs> so we were training in after Master Alex and I would finish, then Mang Tony would uh, train. Then later on, we were able to go to his place, uh, I mean, Binondo. And well, this took uh, went on for quite a while. Okay. And it was one of the most precious moments too, apart from training with Master Elmer and Mang Ben. And one of the best parts here is that Mang Tony and Grandmaster and Master Elmer both had the link because they were friends. They knew each other. See? Oh, okay. And that was a wonderful thing because a lot of people in this generation, past generation, Kali Silo System and Lightning knew each other. So here I am, I'm a lightning guy, and Mang Tony accepts me and says, sure, come, let's go practice. Oh, and, <laughs> you know, just blew me away, I mean, wow. And so yeah. it was a totally different experience from doing lightning. I mean, <clears throat> I, 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 there's, a, again, that cultural thing because um, lightning is, comes, is practiced mostly, you know, from Ilongo speaking and Karaya speaking peoples, uh, because it was formulated, it was developed in the island of Panay in the province of Capiz. In Ilo system, on the other hand, we see these roots among the Cebuano speaking people. Okay? And the language used and the methodology used and the background environment of both styles uh, certainly shaped the physical outward appearance. It's a detail a lot of people tend to gloss over, but it's very important to understand. And Mang Tony and I would often have discussions about the differences between lightning and uh, in the system. For instance, in the lightning, uh, there's a tendency to go down into a low stance. And uh, Mang Tony's perception was that in the, given the terrain where you are, if you're in a rice field, sometimes going low helps you maintain stability. Standing okay. upright, on the other hand, allows you mobility and it's good for particular terrain. Now, both have their uses and both are adaptable to each other. So he always said, well, well why don't you look for the strong points and that's good for you. you know? And this was one other thing that he emphasized to me. He said, when you train with me, I don't want you to move like me. You have to move like yourself because you are Bobot Hokano. You are not Tony Jago. And uh -huh. that was the same lesson imparted to him by Grandmaster Ilusistimo himself too. Uh, Mang Tony Ilusistimo. He said, it's the same thing. And so he said, he had a, he had a point there. Yeah. Because uh, Guru Elmer, uh, when, he, when I was training with Guru Elmer, now Guru Elmer was shorter than me, right? Mang Ben. Our founder, you know, is a tall guy. He was taller than me. So imagine what it's like for me to be training with a guy shorter than me and then taller than me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, because the subtle differences in physical height, they're 
teaching, practicing the same system, but these differences in height lead to a subtle difference in the way the system will be taught. And when you follow along, you will follow your teacher's movements. Sure. So you have, you have the same two teachers of the same system, but two differences in in the way they move. And if you don't pick up on that and figure out that this is why and how I'm going to just take advantage of that, you end up confused. Yeah. And you know, it was with, it was when Mang Tony is telling me these things. I said, Oh, let's realize. So this is also something that clicked with what uh, Guru Elmer told me. Okay. So I'm taller than him, so I have to make the what I what he taught me work for me. Right? And he said, This is the part, this is what you have to do, and this is the price you'll have to pay to make it work for you. And he said, Oh, okay, so that's what it takes. Fine. So I have to work on that. And I'm still trying to get it right after all these years. And with Mangtoni, the emphasis was different because when that with Guru Elmer, um, we were working with a stick. Right, that was pretty clear. With so Elmer gave us our foundation in power training, crashing to the opponent. Right. With Mang Ben, he wanted us to make it more suave, as we call it in uh, Filipino, suave, suave, you know, oh, suave. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> smooth, <laughs> like with Ilusistimo, smooth. Yeah. And it was the same thing with Mang Tony. He wanted it. He wanted us to uh move smoothly right and you know to go with the opponent flow with him and take advantage of it and that was a major teaching that also impacted the way i saw fma totally it gave me an idea how much riches were imparted to me by my teachers you know i'm always amazed at all the stuff that they showed me because here you have a spectrum two but they, they seem to be opposite. A lot of people wanted one or the other, but no, they're not. They're complementary opposites. To, they're complementary supplements to each other in terms of ways of movement. They also reflect different ways of seeing the world because Ilo Sistema is a totally uh, blade-oriented system, even when you're practicing the stick. Correct. Okay. See? And however, You'd have to, as Mangtoni was always uh, adamant, you'd have to practice with the sword to balance the stick. So we would go at it sometimes with the training swords and then sometimes with the metal ones. And the scariest time of my life was when he picked up a live sword and said, okay, let's practice. And I go, you know, my, parts of my significant parts of my anatomy are up here already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but it was it was such a cool time. See, so in many ways too. Then um, the training in Gocho kind of balanced it out, you know, because I learned some additional details in body mechanics on power generation. And this is where with Master Alex Ko, and I saw Kung Fu is not a fancy art. It's practical and it works. You just have to put in the necessary time practicing what your teacher tells you and <clears throat> and practicing, you know, the this is one kind of Kung Fu style that was unique because there's such a great emphasis on two-person work. You have to okay. make it practical for you. And said, okay, so, wow, this is fantastic. So with King, with Mom Tony now, did you yeah did you stay with him up until his unfortunate death? Well, um, towards the end, he wasn't able to go as often to Binondo, right? Mm -hmm. That was the unfortunate part. Um, Arnold and many of the other guys were taking care of him, and me, you know, uh, they were watching, taking care of his needs. Many of the other students were also pitching in. And then I attended his week when he passed on. And that was yeah. one of the saddest things yeah. he ever experienced. Yeah. And, you know, um, to be, have been able to train with him at all and to have sure, learned what sure. he was able to learn, that was a major privilege. It's still oh an experience gosh, and I mean pressure. Some people would this day. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. No, that was, sure. And that went on for several years. So I said, wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to, um, because I know you've, you've you kind of formed your own system, but I want to also touch into, uh, yeah. which is the three, the tele, I hope I'm pronouncing yeah, this correctly. Oh. And yes, uh, Gandhi, the three star. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. I gave that name. All right. That, that name has its genesis in my, from one of my other teachers as well. This time he was uh, Haji Yasir Tanajalan, was teaching me um, a form of silat from Mindanao. It was a family style. Okay. And when I asked him, what do we call what we do? Um, well, first he told me the style that we were learning was what he called the saudara. Now, the saudara in Malay, Indonesia, Malay means a brotherhood. Thank you. But down south, um, saudara also means family. So this was a family method of doing sila. Then he began to teach me some other forms of sila from Mindanao. And he taught me a formulation he called silat telubitun. Now the word, the telu means three in yakan. Bituon is another word in Yakan, which means stars, three stars. Bagani is a word that when formulating the name Telo Bituon Bagani, I borrowed that one from the Manobo, and it means warrior, All right? Okay. So the warrior of the three stars, it symbolizes Guru's aspiration to have, well, among other things, the Silat he was teaching me, to be something that would be well known throughout the zone besides Mindanao, the three stars. Okay? But there were other things Guru Yase was teaching me um, that very important to understand about some of our indigenous people's worldview. The number three, for instance, is significant among the Bangsamoro people because three can mean relationships from your religious perspective. If you're a Christian, that's your relationship to God, to people, and to others. That's one. From what he told me, that it can also be a relationship to your family. That's you, your mother, your father. That's you, your parents, your siblings, if you have any. So the word three is also a triangle, which in FMA is a very, very common uh, right, symbolism common, uh, symbol. and yeah. training tool. Yeah. So... The word three has many other layers and symbolisms of meaning. And later on, when I formulated <coughs> Telubitun Bagani, um, it started from Guru Yasser's teachings, the ethical side of the arts, as well as the worldview that was involved in here. So it was more about not only are we looking at the functionality of whatever you're doing at the moment, but also what's inside of you your ethics, your philosophy, your worldview, your perception of others and yourself. That's very important aspect of warriorship. It's not just simply being a badass. We have plenty yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. But <laughs> going around, right? Yeah, but <laughs> those those who are and those who are, you know. But there are you you could be a badass with your what you do, but you could be somebody who is more than just simply after badassery. I mean, your technical yeah, yeah, skills right. should never be less than perfect as you can make them. But it should also be matched by a way of looking at the world. You're a, a, a strong, a moral compass that's oriented towards what you understand to be good and right and correct. That's a very important balance that we even need now because, um, that's basically what warriorship is all about. Being a Bagani yeah. in the original Filipino sense was about a warrior who was who put the community needs first and foremost. Oh, he protected his community, he protected his family. And I think over there for American viewers, that would resonate with the concept of warriorship. Somebody who puts other people ahead of themselves. Ahead of themselves, yeah. See? No, yeah. that, Somebody okay. puts on them themselves. And across all cultures, you find an expression of this anyway, right? And it's something that we need to keep building on, keep focusing on. So when I did this, I created a page, uh, Telo Bitoon Bagani, 
and in there in the about section i listed eight points of warriorship which are important and which are reflected in the logo because the swords in the logo that i use it's on the flyer and the sword in the handle and the lightning bolt in the middle which is also by the way a shared symbol among many martial arts right uh together they form eight points and so that's where the eight uh parts of the warrior's code are found of course the first one is you have to be brave then you have to be strong then you have to be honorable you have one you know in filipino we say isang salita meaning i'm just a man of one word if i say i'll do it i'll do it if okay. i can't do it i'll let you know ahead of time <laughs> if it's impossible i'll have to let you know I have to be honest about these things you know it's about being honorable and so it goes on like that and then the meaning of the colors as well so in telubitun bagani now my interpretation of all the fma i've studied um well i build upon the foundations taught to me by my teachers i still use the training methods and techniques but uh, there's also a twist uh, flavor and interpretation partly from my own experience partly from my own inquiry and lately i've been encouraging my students to go play with this uh find friends play with people who come from other systems uh, see how you make it work for you that sort of thing so okay so open to interpret not necessarily open to interpretation but they can put their own kind of flavor to it is that fair that should be what a student should do after training with me for some time um oh, yes good. you you follow form there's a set yeah. way of doing techniques you need your abcs after a while you learn your grammar you learn how to put sentences you learn free form writing and then you learn to write an essay there they have to yeah. get to essay writing the quicker the better yeah so, no, no, I, 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 I like uh, that you, you know, you instill that in your students. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't don't just replicate me. I mean, put your own spin on it. Your own, you know what I mean? Uh, to to put it in a way where well, that's so 1980s. You know, find yourself in this art. What are you like here? What does this art for? You know, it's so 1980s. <laughs> yes, it's so 1980s. And for I anyone out there who could relate to that, woohoo! hi guys <laughs> all of us from the oh. in between boomer and x generations <laughs> i want to go back to the 80s <laughs> well anyway um there we have it huh? so i also want them to be consistent at least with an ethical code of conduct but they also need to be able to uh express something so you know many some of those who've been with me for a long time are already at that stage and then i'm just keeping them going and i'm trying to share them more and more of what i have learned from my fma and my gong fu and sila and that's how it goes and then yeah, we yeah. go back to the foundations and then once in a while I say okay we learned this years ago as a basics now check out this interpretation and then you guys uh play with it and see what you can do with it and then you know we we often have a part where hey sir um check this out let's see what we can do with this bang 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 okay here's what we do bang 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 and then mm. i like this one okay that's part of your personal repertoire Fantastic. make it work against anybody yeah. Yeah, because you're, you're the guy who made it okay make it work against all comers yeah right right i mean pro then, test it you know if it uh, works and yeah if it works keep it use it yeah. and add on to it now there, there is a core curriculum and you can but there is also your personal insights you have to build on that eventually and that's the stuff that works for you now i often emphasize that the stuff that you figured out could work for you may not necessarily work for somebody else and that's okay what yeah, you have to do eyes, learn strength you know? yes so you have to learn and do everything and some stuff will work for you make it work regardless anyone else the other stuff that may not be working will work for somebody else learn it competently enough so that when the time comes to teach it to somebody else who can use it you're in a position to teach them how to make it work for them 
yeah. and yeah. you can't get to that without a lot of pressure testing of everything that you pick up so there are times and days when for a period of several weeks after training uh, after the bulk of the uh, drill training we go for sparring different modes of sparring uh, there's drill sparring uh, i just feed one thing and you have to use something from what i taught you under pressure make it work regardless oh, there's free sparring the padded stick then there's armor light stick on a very once in a while because it hurts and we need recovery time uh, at least some of my senior students and i when we have done this light stick minimal armor so just fencing mask gloves all right now you use your stance to protect yourself yeah. okay <laughs> yeah yeah and, the consequences are so much greater yeah. yes and you know me i'm already middle age so recovery time is going to be longer for me but i think i still think having to do that it can be an option for most other fmas it doesn't have to be required for everyone because not everyone is suited for it but for those who can do it then they can see for themselves what they're like you know yeah you confront no, yourself it's a, it's your fast. fears certain things. yeah, yeah. It, it's your way of using your art but now you have a different way of using the art mm -hmm. so that's how it goes and I, I think that's also important too right because we've been experimenting well before the lockdown we've been experimenting with doing many of our uh these arms and emergency techniques live speed this time for instance um both defender and feeder wear a helmet okay now i'm going to whack you full on with the stick and you have to defend and hit me and this arm like this oh, exactly. all right. that's why the helmet why because then you have to hit him back quickly yeah. and then you have to get back to the feeder having to wear armor because then you have to get him hit on the body you can't appreciate your stick defense properly unless you go through a more intense full pressure testing of the technique can you pull it off why can you pull it off why can't you pull it off before you throw it away and say it's useless figure mm -hmm. it out maybe you don't understand it enough to um make it work so what's one way now we have all this equipment available fine let's put in the gear and make it work yeah yeah thankfully uh thankfully when we started doing this one of my students uh if he's listening hi to asher <laughs> he's asher, been um i'm sorry what his name was again maestro i'm sorry asher asher asher, asher Pinzon. yeah yeah That's um he he and some other guys started a full contact stick fighting group a different styles they just come together and play and, they and okay. they styles with each other and they're all friends and you know you know sometimes then when we start doing this now we realize okay there are some times that some disarms can be pulled off in real time and sometimes they mm -hmm. cannot okay so yeah. why is that why is it possible these arms are oftentimes considered by many to be a low percentage technique why because yeah. they're opportunistic so yeah one of the, the one, you know yeah so the sparring actually teaches you how to see opportunities that will just open and close just like that yeah. so like a lot yeah. of life take it now or lose it but you can't force it I know. as Antonio it's... tell me you cannot force a technique to happen it the opening will happen when it's there if it's not there just keep on going yeah right. the window of opportunity <laughs> is the window of yeah. opportunity sometimes is uh yeah you know very small um I, i'm and not it's a life lesson. Asher yes. on here but i do have more comments um mandy this is uh great to hear yeah. from you um i'll have to message you later i'm actually uh same when you're ever coming back out to net again again right uh good friend man <laughs> jeff oh, okay. says jeff says word and growth in the art absolutely uh oh. <laughs> jeff suave so s uh s w a b e yes suave. that's the tagalog pronunciation suave for being suave yeah. 
<laughs> suave. <laughs> I still there's there's a different meaning to the noise when they go suave. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And last one, Jeff, recognize the opportunity, right? If you don't take yeah. advantage of it. Um so then all right, um this is incidentally, this has been fantastic. Um no, thank you. you. If it's okay with you, sure. Um, I saw your 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 segments in a bladed hand, and I thoroughly enjoyed oh, yeah. them. What you were talking Thank about, you. right, right, right. Um, and you touched on something. I, I want to. I'm going to bring this clip up. You, right. There's two clips that really stood out for me. Um, one was uh -huh. um, how you were talking about, you know, Kali and Mindanawa and all that. Yeah. The second mm -hmm. thing was I really enjoyed was the whole discussion on belts, rank from the Japanese. <laughs> okay. I yes. I thought it was really good, like, you know, Thank you. and all that. So, um, again, I want to, um, I'm going to bring something up right sure. now. And I've been having pretty good success with this. So hopefully um, that will continue. Yep. And, uh, no, not that one. Okay. Uh, it's coming. <laughs> uh, Oops. Uh, you're slowing down. I'm losing your audio. Uh, oh, I married you perfectly. Can you still hear me? Oh, couldn't hear your audio. All right. right. Can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Check out the message. Swabe. Haha, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, here's I'm po I'm posting this up now. I'm hoping um uh uh Dean, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I, I lost your audio for a moment there. So I'm oh, not no, sure no, if you asked me a question. Okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm pulling up the internet shaky again. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Yung martial arts na Yes, I can hear you now. Mindanao presents an interesting set of scenarios for martial arts development because most of the indigenous groups have their own fighting style. Some of the Muslim groups are well known for their silat and the indigenous form, which has a combination from Chinese influence. Sorry, Dean, uh, your audio the just suddenly. The Maranao are supposed to have their own Tao as, as well. And so and do so the Manolo. <laughs> Oops. Most, Most of the other of the groups go style Silat. And, and what happens happen here is that there is a constant cross fertilization of ideas and concepts as practitioners become friends with one another and train together or share styles with one another. Some of them are very exclusive, handed down within the family, others are a bit more open, but only within the Muslim community. And others are reach out to the non Muslims who are interested. To learn. But, but maybe only up to a certain point because the, the main reason being, being I think you, you would have you to learn, you would have to become a Muslim audio to learn other things here which have to do with spiritual uh, practice. We so you see, that's a very, very uh, complex uh, scenario. scenario. Okay, hold. Oh. Oops. Come back. I couldn't. Well, anyhow, you know, we can, um, I'll tell you what, remove. Maestro, hit that link again. <laughs> Guess all things considered, things haven't been really that bad with this. I was expecting worse. Uh, hey, Joe, no problems. Thank you for coming on. Danielle, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, we're going to definitely get the questions. I'm just hoping, uh, we didn't lose him permanently. Um, hopefully he'll, uh, hit that link soon. Hopefully. Um, let me see. 
I got to uh, bear with me, guys. I'm going to send, well, see if he can um, jump on it again. He's not even singing about Not sure if he lost internet or I'm just waiting. Oh, no, I, he's back on. So hopefully I'll be joining us again. I hope so. This was getting just way too good. I definitely want to get into the blade of hand stuff. That was some good stuff in there. Uh, Sign me a message. Just lost the signal there. Uh, oh, maybe not because he's here. Okay. All right. Show and stream. Uh, Maestro, not seeing you. Um, Maestro, try it again. I'm going to X you out uh, just because your pick or nothing's coming in. Ah, uh, good heavens. Okay, yes. All right. Um, yes, but no. Yeah. Can you try again? Sorry, folks. I'm hoping he can get back on. <clears throat> Meanwhile, what can I talk about? Um, maybe going to a different platform um to avoid this uh lloyd my um uh, coach in the uh uh hold on here um the nicest i'm doing with him gave me a suggestion of basically pulling people through skype using a middle platform and then going to facebook um He's kind of a tech guy, and he seems to think that would uh, uh, would be um, significantly better than kind of what's happening. Here. Uh, even though there's been some mostly success with be live here, but it's cases like this where it's just it drives me nuts. Uh, so that's. Actually, I'm going to be talking to Lloyd tomorrow, and he's going to give me uh, some updates on it. But thinking uh, that might be a way, that might be a uh, far as future pursuing. Um, 
<clears throat> so just send them an I want to know anything would be potentially an issue if he's totally lost the signal, which I don't think is the case because I'm seeing online here. So I don't want to X this out because then I'll have to stop the whole recording and all that. Um, and like again. God, it's going so well there for a while. I'm going to give him a few more minutes. God, we're just about to get to the blade of hand, too. Man. Send me a message now. Let me just see what's good. And then slow down. All right, so he's definitely got stuff going on with his internet. Oh, but he's here. Let's see what this brings. All right, same thing. Maestro, Matt, um, actually, what I'm thinking we could do is maybe this doesn't work again. He's not coming in. Um, end it here and just do a part two. And the part two could be picking up on the bladed hand into um, questions, because I had a few questions from people. Um, that might be the uh, route to go. Okay, losing jam. Yeah. Okay. You know what, folks? I'm going to think I'm going to have to do that regrettably, is end this and then do a part two with him. Um, his internet, he just messaged me on Messenger, and his internet, I guess, has significantly slowed down, um, sadly. Uh, let me see. Losing audio. Okay. All right. No worries. Let's... Let's do a part two with covering the bladed hand and questions. So he says there. I guess he, he was mentioning before, I guess as it goes later there and more and more people, you know, we're kind of getting out of their day, more and more internet's being used. And so um, that's probably, I'm guessing what's the case is here. So, um, but uh, all right, I'm going to, uh, I want to thank you all that jump, jumped in and watched. Um, the, you know, what a shame, because that was some good content. Um, and what I'm thinking what I'm going to do is definitely do a part two of them because I really wanted to cover the bladed hand with him. And again, there were some questions that a few folks had that I wanted to uh, get across. So this might be just a time to do that and um, definitely bring him back. 
which I just sent him a message on. So I can't imagine that he wouldn't do that. So um, again, I thank you all that watched. Uh, to consider this uh, part one, and part two will be uh, will be coming up, um, and all that. So. Um, Meantime, we had a I had a uh, scheduling issue. So this Thursday I was going to have Nick Proses on, but unfortunately, um, he had something going on, and um, so I'm going to be this Thursday instead. I'm going to be bringing Guru uh, Jeff and Guru Vico both, and um, so that should be very entertaining and fun. So uh, that's this Thursday, same time, seven o'clock. And again, if you haven't hit, please hit like and subscribe to FMA Discussion on YouTube. And, um, and I'll see you guys then. Again, sorry, but th those who watch, thank you. And I'll definitely keep you in a loop as far as uh, part two with uh, Maestro Giacano. All right, all. See you Thursday.